guys welcome back to my channel so for today's video you guys if you've been around this channel for a while you may know that my pride and joy is my container full of random heads that i've bought off of aliexpress and ebay i'll link the ebay seller that i typically buy heads from down in the description box i found this random head on there that is like a demon baby doll i i don't know who this is by um, I, I've never seen this head before, which is sort of saying something because I feel like I'm pretty well acquainted with random doll brands, whether they be from America or around the world. I'm acquainted with BJDs. So yeah, I have no idea where this is from. Um, but I thought it would be a really good rainbow high hybrid. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to make a demon schoolgirl. If you guys have seen the anime demon schoolgirl trope, that's the vibes we're going for. I'm using Bella Parker's body for this. I am heating up the rainbow high head with a blow dryer and then just pulling it off. And I didn't have to adjust the demon baby's head at all. Um, I just heated it up with blow dryer and it went on pretty okay. Since this is an early rainbow high doll, she only has back and forth head movement, not up and down. And I find that the head and body skin tone match is okay. It's not perfect, but when I blush everything, you really can't tell. I spray the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask, and then we get on into the face up. This doll has very heavily molded on eyes, which I dig, so I'm gonna be following the mold pretty closely. Love an eyelid wrinkle here so that's what we're doing we're giving her many an eye wrinkle this doll has a very hard head so all these colors from these pencils are going on super well i find whenever i paint dolls with harder heads people are like what kind of pencils do you use and it's mainly because i mean i use nice pencils but it's mainly because the head is very hard if y'all don't know a harder head just means that colored pencils show up better all right, so I was trying something new. Typically, I love blushing my dolls with pink, but I was like, let's try peach. So that's what this is. Um, I don't know if I love it. I do end up going in with a bit of dark pink on top. I mean, I think I like it. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's like, you know when you see a baby and they've eaten too many carrots and they're just very orange? It's kind of giving that. I do like it more once I add the red on top, though. I added some blush to her horns as well. In retrospect, part of me feels like I should have painted them because they look a little freaky being flesh colored and I can't tell if I hate it or I like it. I added a lot of shading around her eyes with brown pastels. We got a color in that waterline, so I'm doing so with a peachy watercolor pencil. I absolutely love blue on skin tones, which is why I'm adding blue around her eyes, her horns, her ears, um, her mouth, nose, like literally everywhere. Um, I'm also going to be adding veins in all of those areas as well with a very light blue watercolor pencil. The veins are just very light branch-like pencil marks around the eyes, the ears, and the forehead. I feel like in the past when I've seen people do veins and it doesn't look great is they just add too many veins um, and it looks a little too intense or they use a very like it's just like a too dark of a blue colored pencil. Um, the one that I use is very light and it barely shows up which I think is pretty ideal. It's a Faber-Castell pencil if you guys are curious. Those are nice too as well because they're not the most pigmented pencils um, but you get a lot of control out of them so you'll make them more pigmented if you press down pretty hard. I had very light purple tones around the edge of the eyes and the forehead. We love a bitten lip look, so we're going to do that with a Q-tip and red pastel. I just tap that on the middle of the upper and lower lip. I 
I literally never give dolls green eyes. Um, I think green eyes are pretty, but I guess I just think other colors are prettier or just easier to paint, honestly. It's probably that. But I figured let's switch it up. Let's give her some green eyes. So that's what we're doing. It's not the most demon-y eye color, but you know what? That's also exciting. I like highlighting with my white pan pastel, so I'm putting that on the brow bone, nostrils, um, chin, all over the place. We're at the stage where I start doing more intense highlights, so I'm doing so with a white colored pencil, and I'm just drawing sharp lines around the eyes and the upper lip. I add little flicks of lip wrinkles to the lips with a red pencil. This doll has a very like adorable face, but I wanted her to have some like fierce eyebrows, so I made them pointing down slightly. Um, I really like this eyebrow shape and it also makes the character look a little bit more like mischievous. We also of course had to give her the slit pupils because it's just like real demon like, you know? To further emphasize those highlights that I put down with white watercolor pencil, I'm just going over certain lines with white paint. Them brows need some hair, so that's exactly what we're doing with a dark brown watercolor pencil. I'm just adding some flicks going up and then to the side when I get to the tail of the brow. We love a fuzzy line around the eye, so I'm taking black paint and I'm adding flicks going all around the iris. This doll isn't perfect. It has like a dent on the cheekbone. Um, it kind of looks like a pockmark or something and it's fairly big. So I was debating between, you know, sanding it down or just covering it up with something. So I just decided to cover it up with a black heart. I like adding highlight lines radiating out from the pupil. So I'm doing this first with a light green. For the lashes, we're first going in with a Faber-Castell watercolor pencil. I'm just flicking some lines on the top lashes and then the bottom lashes. Um, I like this Faber-Castell pencil. I feel like I've mentioned this like a million times, but I like this pencil because it's very hard, so it gives you a very sharp line. I must say, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but these are some of my favorite lashes I've done in a while. So we don't only need dark lip lines, we also need light lip lines to highlight. So I flicked some light peach pencil on the lower lip. At this point, I literally do this with like every face up. I took some rose gold colored pencil and I added a couple flicks of that on top of the outer lashes. I wanted the eye highlight lines to pop a little bit more, so I'm going in with a yellow watercolor and a metallic gold watercolor and going over certain lines in those eyes. We love a shiny, teary waterline in this household, so I'm doing several steps to achieve that. The first thing I'm doing is I'm taking my metallic rose gold watercolor pencil and I'm shading in the outer and the inner portion of the waterline. Then I'm taking my metallic rose gold watercolor paint and I just add a couple dots to the waterline and a final step of white paint um, as well on the waterline. I've been digging these sharp pointy eye highlights lately, specifically when I paint eyes in this style. So I'm just doing those up on this eyeball. 
We gotta gloss up them little lippies, so we're doing that with this Tommy gloss. I really like how this doll's face up came out. Um, I just really like how her eyes came out and her eyebrows, and I just think she looks very sassy. I felt like this heart needed a little more something something, so I took this dragonfly glaze and put a coat of it on her heart. For her hair, rerooting wasn't an option because her head is just as hard as a rock, so I decided to do a half and half hair color. I did pink and lavender, and I'm gonna be creating wefts with yarn. I did so off screen, and I'm first giving her her bangs, and then I'm going to be gluing the wefts starting from the bottom of her hair, and then working it around her hair, going all the way up to the top. We're gonna be giving her space buns. So I'm doing so by just rolling up a weft and then hot gluing it onto the top of her head where I put little X's. For the part, I glued a weft down and then flipped it. I trimmed the hair starting with the bangs. I wanted them to be pretty short and I wanted her hair to be about down to her shoulders. Space buns are pretty easy. You just twist the yarn around and then wrap it around the bottom of the weft. To make the hair lay flat, I used pomade and also a little bit of water and just kind of smooth it down on her head. On to clothes! So we're going to be making her a schoolgirl uniform and I truly did not know how to make one. So I just kind of looked at it and we're going to like finagle it together. That's what I do best. We're starting with the shirt. The shirt is a pretty simplistic t-shirt like pattern. So we're going to be hemming everything with Fabri-Tac glue. I'm looking at the design of a lot of Japanese school world uniforms and they have lines so I'm gonna be painting those on with acrylic paint the lines on her neck bandana John <laughs> I don't know what these are um, were a little bit more complicated uh, they're not like hard I just have to be very careful with the lines for these because they're just more intense so this is how it turned out I think it looks pretty decent we're going to be sewing the front and back together at the shoulders <laughs> Okay, so it's not like a neck, okay, it looks like a bandana bee, but it's a collar, right? Yeah, okay. So there is a second uh, like bandana slash ribbon thing underneath the collar. And I believe that the collar is supposed to wrap around it and then like tie, but I don't know how to do that at this scale. So we're just gonna be gluing this in place. Then I sew the collar to the top of the shirt. To make it look like the collar is wrapping around the bandana ribbon scarf thing, I am just wrapping this second piece of fabric and gluing that around. So listen, listen, Linda, does it look perfect? No. 
Does it kind of look like a schoolgirl shirt? Yeah, so A plus for me, okay? <laughs> Maybe like B minus. Um, I'm gonna be sewing the sleeves together at the top and then we're gonna be sewing the side seam. After that's done, we're gonna move on to the skirt and I'm gonna be doing some pleating on that. So I am just folding it and then pinning it in place and then sewing that in place. And am I using the right kind of fabric to pleat? No, you should use something stiffer. Um, so my pleats don't look like pleats, but I like, still like the skirt, okay? So when I watched I Can Do That DIYs video when we did the bug collab, I really liked his little bun covers. Um, I've always been a fan of bun covers, like Chun-Li was kind of my street fighter hero. So I'm going to be creating those and I am just gather stitching at these little circles and then pulling them together on top of her bun. This is incredibly easy to do by the way, so if you want to try it, I would. A school girl needs socks, so we're going to make socks. Actually, um, these are from baby socks. I have a bunch of baby socks because you can make a really easy beanie for dolls with baby socks. Um, but I just cut out the pattern and sewed it up the back and then flipped it. For shoes, we're going to be using Sunny Madison's G1 shoes and I spray painted them white and then I'm going to be painting them in her corresponding colors with acrylic paint. We got to protect all that work so I'm doing so with some matte varnish. I want to give her a cute little demon tail, so I'm going to be drilling a hole into her back. Before I make the demon tail, I want to blush her body though. So I just spray her three times Mr. Super Clear to prep her for pastel and pencils like I did with the face. And then I go in with the same colors that I used on the face. So pinks, purples, uh, blue, red, brown. Since I want her to be a little bit of a misfit, a little mischievous, I gave her a band-aid on her knee that I'm sketching in with pencil and then going over for the details with paint. Here she is. Honestly, like what a cutie. <laughs> I really like her. I really like her little band-aid. I think it turned out pretty cute. For that tail, I'm just gonna be create a very simple demon tail. So I take my epoxy sculpt, mold it together, the two parts, and then I cut a little heart out of it with an X-Acto blade. After I get it shaped to my liking, I stick a wire into the top of the heart. I couldn't get the heart to stick onto the wire for whatever reason, so I let it dry and then I super glued it in place. Off screen, I took my spray paint and I spray painted it purple. We got a decorator bun, so I'm taking this string that I put some beads and bobs on. I wrapped it around her bun and I tied it a knot in the bottom. I then added more beads that I'm just pulling up over the knot. Itty bitty beads that I put onto a string and I am tying that around the bun. This is how the hair came out. It came out pretty stinking adorable. I just really like these little buns. We've got to super glue her tail into place and then she is ready to go. This is her with all her little accessories. Um, she's honestly like such a queen, love her so much. Um, I really like how she turned out. I've been wanting to make this doll for a while ever since I got this head. Um, and also I just feel like demon schoolgirl anime kind of characters are just like the cutest things. So if you guys like her, uh, let me know down below in the comments. 
Um, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe, it makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,